Hello everyone, and Craig here. I'm Rhino. Yep, and we are at Epcot today and standing right outside of Electric Umbrella. Wow, it's a fun queue. The umbrella went by. Oh, that did go by. So <laughs> I believe that was a, a shade umbrella though, right behind us. You might be asking, why are we standing out front of Electric Umbrella? We'd be smart enough to never eat there. And most of the time, you'd be right. But not today. No, not today. Now we're gonna we're gonna try it out. So this is going to be our way to uh, bid adieu to this restaurant because I will probably not be back to it uh, until you know before it gets the axe. But before it's gone, I think we gonna have to go inside and answer the question: Is it is it actually okay? Is this something yeah. that we're actually losing? Is it with in all fact the electric? Okay. With that, I think we should head inside and see its electricity. I went with the energy salad with roasted chicken. Okay, so this is fresh greens topped with roasted chicken, seasonal fruit, and feta cheese. Um, the seasonal fruit looks to be the fruit that it was in the picture, which is blueberries. Um, and there is some kale in here, and romaine, and uh, definitely lots of feta, and uh, some sort of uh, citrusy dressing which I am, I'm interested to try this. So I'm gonna go in, it, it actually, it looks pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, the chicken looks pretty good. Better than I expected is what I should say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, the chicken's pretty good. It's not not too dry. Um, it's got a, from the looking at it, it might look like it's got a lot of seasoning on it. It's got a light seasoning. I, I can, I can't really describe it, but it's very like, it's it's not overpowering any of the, the dressing or anything like that. Is it more than just salt and pepper is the seasoning? Yeah, I think so, but I can barely, I can't figure out what, get off here, what it is. I don't know, because there's a coloring to it, but it's not, it's really not coming through very much. But it also, that's fine because the, the, um, the like vinaigrette that's on here is citrusy, not super citrusy, but it definitely pairs well with the blueberries. Um, I am not usually a fan of uh, fruit and vegetables like mixed together. I love them all separately, but especially in salads, I don't care for them, but actually, I'm not minding this one. The blueberries are um, giving it a nice little pop of flavor here. Um, it makes it all feel very light, except for, I feel like there's a lot of this um, vinaigrette on here. So it's, it's actually, I'm getting kind of like a greasy feeling in my mouth with it. Um, I'll have to eat a little bit more to let you know how I feel about it. Um, I, I went with this one basically because I felt like the other kind of uh, lighter side option, which was the energy salad, was kind of plain because that was just fresh greens with seasonal, oh, this describes it as something completely different. There was a quinoa thing in here, and it's not on the regular menu to order it, so I will retract my it was, statement. It was in the pictures, though. I asked you if you were going to get the quinoa salad. Yeah, but I, I didn't because it was basically like a scoop of quinoa. It was like some carrots, some cauliflower, um, edamame, and, I, and maybe there was like one other thing, and I was kind of like, these all seem like good sides, but there's nothing bringing it together for me. It is the plant-based option right now. It is, yes. And so I felt like it was kind of basic when they have a lot of really interesting plant-based options at Epcot to try out. But I'm not going to knock it for that, because so far, so good on this one, though. Better than expected. But yours looks like it might not be the same story, so why don't you try yours before it gets any more dry? This one was a really big toss-up for me. I did not quite know what to go with. Uh, you know, there is a, a specialty burger here, the Moho Pulled Pork Burger, which is a burger topped with marinated Moho pork and drizzled with cilantro lime aioli, and I was like, 
It's just going to be an interesting topping, probably on top of a really terrible burger, usually like what happens with the specialty burger. So stayed away from that. The chicken prosciutto mozzarella sandwich also caught my eye, but once Rhino made the decision to get a dish with chicken, felt like we didn't need to team up on the chicken. So uh, I went the opposite route, kind of a mixture of what my first inkling was and nothing of my second inkling, but I went with the brisket sandwich. This is slow cooked smoked beef brisket marinated in au jus on top a toasted roll covered with homemade beer cheese and served with french fries for $10.99. And just based on appearances of it, is, is, as soon as it got set down on our tray and he looked at it, the first thing I told Rhino is the best compliment I can give this is that it looks like a school lunch. And I, I don't know if that is a compliment now that I'm really thinking about it, but it does look like something you would find. It looks like one of those chew toys that you find at Target that you're like, that's yeah. cute. My dog will love that. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, it, so it does look like your, your school cafeteria lunch. You know, the beer cheese, always love a good beer cheese. I will say the, the hoagie roll on it's nice. It's soft. You can tell there's like a slight crisp on the outside. Not crunchy, but, uh, you know, can't complain about the bread. The brisket, I'd say there's a decent amount inside. You know, when you take into consideration it's a big long bun I, i'd say there's a fair amount in it and let me actually grab this i'll try a piece of brisket i want to call you the bread whisperer from how you just held your bread to your ear and squeezed it and you're like what's, what's that? that what's that what's that yeah <laughs> it's telling me i need to eat it <laughs> and i will okay so the uh, the actual meat inside is you know it's good it's a little on the salty side so it's almost not even fair to call something like this brisket it's it, more like a slow roasted pot roast it looks like steak well, like, and i think that's kind of what they're going for with this yeah. is kind of like their take on a philly cheesesteak but uh I, I just looking at it and tasting the brisket itself i will say that peppers and onions would take mm. this actually to the next level but let's see if the beer cheese sauce is just good enough with it This mood music. Mm. <laughs> and before anyone says, ooh, gross, he just licked his hands, I did wash them right before we started, and I haven't touched anything since then except for my camera and my food. Okay, uh, first thing I have to note is I got a bite with a lot of beer cheese, and I will say, it is, uh, you can tell it's not just your standard average uh, Disney. Um, hot cheese it's like it actually is beer cheese uh, so it it does kind of you know like you can't taste the beer or anything in there obviously like like most beer cheeses but you can tell it's not just your standard average ordinary Disney melted cheese so I do like that it uh, it helps elevate the sandwich a little more And it pairs really nicely, actually, with the meat. So it's nice, it's a nice salty, savory dish. The one thing I do wish, which maybe I'll get over it, but without the uh, without the bun being a little crunchier on the outside, I do feel like it's missing out on something crunchy mm. with it. Really, again, like peppers, or something. peppers and onions, sauteed peppers and onions. Even I know they can sometimes get a little greasier when you're talking about quick service, but even if it would have been an option to have like fresh peppers and onions on there, I feel like that would have added a nice little crunch to it. So I think I might actually be okay with this, mm. oddly enough. I need to think about it though. And as for the fries, you know, we never really talk about them when when we're doing these quick service reviews if we have to end up getting the fries, but standard Disney quick service fries, like you're gonna get anywhere else. So no thrills, no surprise on that. So I'm gonna keep eating, Rhino's gonna keep eating. We'll fill you in on what we think when we're finished. We are all wrapped up with our meal here at Electric Umbrella. And Rhino, where do you think you stand on it? Um, I think it was fine. I know what I got was kind of basic, just the salad, but I liked uh, the ingredients I thought were good. Um, I enjoyed the blueberries and I thought the chicken was just fine. Um, but I would say, I, I would maybe ask if that dressing is a possible on the side, because for me it was one of those like, 
when you go to the Olive Garden and they have the big salad, you know, and it's yeah. like really soaked up in that. That's what it reminded me of. So that gets a little like greasy. Some people love it like that though. So that's just personal preference, but I thought it was fine. Yeah, I, you know what? Color me shocked, oh, you know. Uh, what mine was, was definitely- shocked because it's the electric umbrella? Yeah, sure. Okay. How about we'll go with that. Uh, with what I got, you know, this was not a culinary adventure or anything. It was a, uh, it was a slow roasted meat sandwich in juice on a bun that somehow did not manage to get soggy, but then also had a lot of flavor from the meat itself and the beer cheese. It was not healthy in any ways. I wish something a little bit better could have been offered as a side dish, you know. Like, even even some crunchy house-made oh, chips. Did, yeah, I was just going to say, house-made yeah. chips were definitely fit because you could have put them in. Exactly. Something something else other than french fries. French fries, you know, they're yeah. they're overplayed. But the sandwich was self, itself, if they would have had, like, vegetables or something on it, like I've said a million times now, peppers and onions, maybe if it was served with chips, like, this would actually be an awesome meal and i know it's gonna i'm losing all credibility saying that but it actually was tasty yeah but i will say the overall vibe i get when i was going in there and looking at the menu and like getting ready to order it feels very like we gave up yeah like you know like we've got some things they're gonna be basic but we're not gonna it's no thrills you know yeah and that's nothing has to oh not everything has to be either well and that's part of that sandwich it was, there was nothing thrilling about that sandwich but the fact is it was more interesting than just a burger and fries or even a hot dog and fries and yeah it was well done so i really can't complain about that and uh the the only thing you know with electric umbrella it is it still does have that vibe of basicness to it like rhino said it, it feels kind of dirty a little bit at this yeah. point and i not even like oh there's it's filth but you know it's carpeted in there and there's a lot of like food ground up in the carpet but also like the carpet's kind of old so it's got like um just like a little bit of a grimy feel to it and like it could be a hundred percent clean because they were cleaning the tables the whole time and everything it's just an age thing yeah i think at this point well and i mean yeah it's it, that is also probably one of the reasons why it is going away in uh this upcoming winter is because it's just gotten past the point of where they can actually keep it clean. But at the same time, too, it wasn't like I need to come eat outside in order to uh, to to eat in a more sterile environment. Oh, but, yeah. No, no, no. But there is. That's part of the, the benefit of this. There is tons of outdoor seating here at Electric Umbrella. Even inside, there's a decent amount. I It, it seems like there's always more seating in there, but... Uh, because of having like the upstairs uh, section when that is open, but it, it does feel cramped and claustrophobic it, it, and loud. Yeah, inside. it definitely, whether it was closing or not, it was in need of a redesign because where you go in to order to, I feel like is a cross point. Like it's just, it's too small of an area to moving back and forth with like trays of food with yep. kids and scooters and wheelchairs and all that stuff. So it can become very chaotic with very few people. Yeah. So uh, I, one of the things I do enjoy though, besides what I had there is I really do love the uh, that upstairs like we sat right under a speaker yeah. that was still playing that Epcot entrance medley loop and so it, it feels like you get classic Epcot while you're eating it I there. do so like the I, nice. I do like the upstairs though I don't know yeah. why I like like at Harbor House where you can go upstairs in the Magic Kingdom I like a place that has an upstairs yeah. it makes me feel like kind of cool and also like it's a step away you know like you can kind of go into a corner somewhere up there and take a break maybe yeah so i think that's about it the ultimate uh the ultimate deciding factor here really is is this a place that you feel like there's no other options and you have to eat here or can you make your way somewhere else can you make your way to world showcase to the land even but yeah, uh, the last couple of meals i've had there were just oh, no. okay but i've never been a huge of a fan of it as other people have so I'm not going to sit here and try to act like it was always my favorite. But I think the point I was making was I don't think necessarily now if you stop at an electric umbrella, you're not like right out the gate going to have a bad meal. You can probably we haven't had everything on the menu, obviously, but I'm sure you could still make bad choices there. But I, you know, I think there are some OK choices you can make there. Yeah. Sometimes the food at World Showcase, it can just be overwhelming deciding what which which one yeah. you're going to dive into and you just want something like something this. Just, easy going yeah. and with with the barbecue place not open in america yet american adventure 
this it's kind of like this is the place to get that really basic food. Yeah. So, well, that's what we thought of Electric Umbrella, and of course, we want to hear what you had to say about it. If you think you're you're going to call us crazy down in those comments below, then you should probably do so. Get down there and start letting us know how terrible we are. And uh, yeah, let us let us know if you're excited for what's coming in place of Electric Umbrella, or if you're going to miss it because you only have. I only have a short amount of time to get out here and eat at the restaurant before it is gone forever. So, uh, also, if you you enjoyed this video, want to watch other ones on our channel, always subscribe and hit that bell button so you get notified with new videos. Hit that thumbs up. So, that's it for Rhino and I. We'll see you again with another video. But until then, see ya.